Look in the mirror. I see a great man. But look in the mirror. I see a great man. Just look in the mirror. I see a great man. I see a great man. I see a great man. I used to live like a live. My boy TJ Trenton Johnson. Yes, sir. I'm happy that you were finally doing this with you for a while. Talk about at least a few months now. Yeah. Yeah, but truthfully, bro, no better time than ever because you just won that competition. So we get to talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So no better time than ever. God doesn't make mistakes. He puts us right where we're supposed to be at the right time. So, so bro, let's. I, I don't know where to start. Like, I don't. I don't. Know. Should we just? You feel me? Because it's not. So I'll tell you, it's different for you because uh, well, not necessarily because. You know, usually um, people I have won, it's either like I haven't seen them in a long time or like this is my first time meeting them. Like I've only known them for 24 hours or something. But like we hang out on a regular <laughs> basis. So it's not like we have a bunch of catching up to do. But I guess I'll start with what you've been up to. Like how you been? How's life been going? I know you're going through some things, I guess. Ups and downs. Ups and downs. Yeah, ups and downs. Yes, yeah. yeah, so how's life? Not too bad, man. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, you right, going through some things. Uh, those that don't know, a little breakup. You know, it, it was a mu- mutual ending, so, you know. What is good? It was good and bad, you know, on both sides. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. things, oh. people just grow apart, you know. Ain't nothing yeah. wrong with that. But, uh. I feel like as an adult, you always have to be, like, no matter how it ends, like, even if you get cheated on or whatever, you always have to be, like, how could I have been better in that right. relationship? No matter how it ends. Like, I feel like for you... I like, cheated well, on No, something. yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> of course. Sure. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. It's just meet you ended. But as far as me personally, you know, things, I ain't gonna lie, are going pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm in the film industry, you know, I'm an actor. It's also making my way to becoming a producer, writer, all that. You know, like you were talking about our competition. We had a film festival. It was this like a month? Uh, a little over a month ago, uh, did a film. You know, I wrote it. I was our head director, our main cameraman. So, you know, to win so many awards for it, the film was called Sell Your Soul. So, to win so many awards for it, it felt great. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, for sure. And now, me and the core four, that's what we call ourselves, uh, we're taking that and we're going to keep the ball rolling. Mm-hmm. Our production team is called Elite Media Productions. Uh, We plan on, by the end of this year, have at least three more short films and an episodic, uh, you know, filmed and rolling and entered into more film festivals, see what else we can do and progress from there. What did you get your degree in? I got my degree in theater. That's what I thought. So that's what I thought. So this (laughs) is kind of something you've always wanted to do. Yeah. It's always always been a part of the family, you know. Right. Mother, she's back. She's always been in uh, the acting you right. know, world. Uh, Your brother was on like BMF, wasn't he? So my brother plays Kevin in BMF. For those that you know have watched the show, yeah. Uh, not gonna give y'all any spoilers, so don't ask. <laughs> um, he's also played in the Rufus Franklin movie Respect. He was the main, the oldest son. Um, he's done. He's doing a couple other projects. You know, like I said, my mom, she works with Blumhouse Studios. Okay. For those that don't know, Blumhouse does like the Halloween movies, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Uh, she has her own production crew as well. So it's just been a part. Yeah, uh, something your whole family yeah. is kind of into it. Chloe and Hallie Bailey, my cousins, yeah. you know, got their family that's in the acting and all that. So yeah. it's just, it's a family affair for real. So <laughs> football, how did that come about for you? Football, so actually... Uh, my dad always wanted us to play football, but my mom was like, no, nah, I don't want to see them get hurt. Yeah. Then uh, mom got remarried. I think it was in the third grade. Yeah, that was my first year I knew that. Uh, that's when, you know, he was like, no, let them play, you know, because he wasn't as athletic, so he wanted us to be able to do it. Yeah. And from there on, I just played football every year. And, uh, yeah, I ended up, Moving here, junior, senior year, played, ended up going to Moorhead, met you guys. Uh, didn't play as much as, you know, yeah. I felt I should have, and a lot of people also agree, you know, I should have. But for me, I, 
after like I said midway through my third year, I didn't allow it to get to me because you know I'm a faith driven person and I also had you know Rich uh, Duffield yeah. as my mentor. You know, yeah, bro, real <laughs> real life bro. Uh, he always you know just let me know you know we all have our purpose. Yeah, and. You know me, I'm always a happy person anyway. Always so. a happy people, I know, for sure. <laughs> Try to be, man. Yeah. So, I Where does that come from? <laughs> I can't even tell you. I honestly, I don't know. Because it's a, because, I mean, because we, you know, you say it in football all the time. Like, when you come down here, you got to flip a switch. Right. So, like, that's, that's like saying, like, your attitude, your demeanor, all that stuff is, like, meant as a choice. Right. So, it's kind of like... So you choosing to be happy every day, like that has to come from something. Like you know what I'm saying? Like that has to stem from something. I'll probably say so one having a big family, you know, always good times, always good laughs. Yeah. Uh yeah. <laughs> uh I don't know. I'll, if I had to pinpoint it, I I'd just pinpoint it on my family. You know, my dad, he was always making us laugh. My brothers and siblings, they always, you know, it was always laugh. Not always laughs, you know, I always yeah. had those sibling rivalries sibling and rivalry fights, stuff. but, of course. you know, I just, and then growing up, being more mature and being more faith-driven, I just understood that, you know, I control what I can, what I control, you know, I can't, everything outside is, you know, stuff that I can't allow to dictate my circumstance. My other dad, you know, as well, he always told us, you know, you you define uh, your attitude, your circumstance, you know, you determine how you want to react to certain things. So, yeah, I say other dad, right. you know, we don't use that term step like he's not a step dad. He's, he's my, my other dad. dad. Yeah. So just things like that and keeping that mentality, you know, through whatever just allows me to always keep a smile. Right. Yeah. Not every day, obviously. It's the moments, yeah. you know. Life yeah. happens. Yeah. <laughs> Life happens. You know. But for the most part, yeah. If you if you if you win more days than you lose, then you were doing pretty well. Exactly. And that's kind of a choice, no? For sure. For sure. Cause, I mean, that's one of the first things that I remember about you that stood out <laughs> was just your smile, how happy you were. Yeah, man. You know, an energetic person. So yeah, no, for sure. That's that's crazy, but I don't. Um, I've had to work on that. So like one of the issues I've always had, um, like with leadership, like because in high school I was like team captain or whatever, right. and like one of the biggest things like we, me and Coach Rose used to talk about all the time, like Jacob, you gotta be more consistent. Mm-hmm. He was like, when you were having a bad day, everyone could see it on your face, and it's like you can't do that, like you can't do that if you're a leader. So I had to like work on that because that's hard. It is. <laughs> it's, it's really hard because you, when you wake up in the morning and you're having negative thoughts and, and all these things and you have to de- yeah, at a certain point in time you just have to decide like yes I'm going through this but I'm not about to sit here and keep like letting this let I guess like what Rich used to say suffering is inevitable but misery is a choice exactly you know what I'm saying and that's kind of like that's kind of what that's what it's a man it's a mindset right you have to choose like all right I'm suffering through something but I'm not about to be miserable while I'm suffering through this. You know, I'm not about to allow it to affect everything else. Everything else. Everything else. Like, because, like, I'm thinking about this situation, like, with my mom. Mm-hmm. And, like, it's like, but it, it hurts. Like, I'm not going to, you know what I'm saying? It hurts. But it's like, but I, like me sitting here is not going to make it feel better. <laughs> right. You know? So I'm just like, I got to keep moving. Got to keep doing things. Got to keep trying things. Got to keep doing. I don't know. If you ask me, I found the. What's the word? Perfect uh, coping mechanisms mm-hmm. or medicine to fight against depression. Right. And it's exercise. It's sun. Reading good, healthy books that have moved with certain energies and powers to uplift you. Right. And you listen to happy music, good music. Right. I'm not listening to sad, depressing music that justify my feelings or make my validate my right. feelings. You know. I'm listening to things that are like, hey, bro, get up, like, motivational stuff. Like, I switched my Instagram, you know, months ago, almost a year ago to, like, it's all workout stuff, motivational stuff. Like, I don't really see much else. So it's like whenever I'm sitting there and I see Vinny going to the gym or, you know, whatever, it's kind of like, all right, I need to get my butt up. Like, let's go. So I feel like it's just a choice. And then, you know, it's 
a lot of people in our generation don't understand that, and they don't, and they haven't, they haven't started to like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They haven't started to grasp like yeah. the power that they have inside. Like everyone's looking outside for it, mm -hmm. but it's like it's, 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 it's inside. inside. It's yeah. inside. All of it's inside, and. All of it's inside. So like the soul soul searching thing. Mm -hmm. You spend your whole life soul searching. You can go millions of places, but what you're looking for is inside. Absolutely. Inside, a hundred percent. And I'm about to say the uh, track back, uh, cause you know, you know, I lost my dad a few years ago. Yeah. You know, another reason that I continue to be happy is cause you know I have a solid why. You know. That's something a lot of people don't have. They don't have that solid why, wow, that yeah. consistent why in life. Uh, and I hope same for you because I know you. You know you loved your mom and stuff. And I'm, be straight up, it is <laughs> it, it's, it's it's still hard. Yeah. Years later. Yeah. You know it's not gonna be like oh this gets easier. Nah, it, it'd be days. Yeah. Where it just breaks you down. But you know for me, my dad is one of my consistent whys. You know I know he's watching me, so I wanna. Do what I can to, you know, make him proud because, you know, I want to live through him, by him. Right. And, you know, if he was here, everything I do, I'd be like, well, would he, would he look at me and be like, I'm proud of you, son, or, yeah. you know, keep Facts. going and stuff like that. Facts. So, no, that's one thousand. Yeah. Facts. And, you know, you actually said that to me because we had talked about it before yeah. like I posted it on Facebook or anything and he, well, that was one of the things that you said it was like yeah. it doesn't necessarily get easier no. over the years and so like that's why the day so like she passed on a Monday so Tuesday morning that Tuesday morning I woke up and did my side hustle at 3 in the morning mm -hmm. went about my day like before it really settled in I did all the stuff that I normally would have done right and I think because of what you said and me doing that, it made the days after more manageable. Because it was the understanding of like, all right, this is how it's gonna feel. Yeah. New reality. Like it's not gonna. It's not that it's gonna get easier, but so I have to be able to still operate exactly through this not easy time. And I, and I think that that really might put it in perspective to me. Like, all right, but it's not gonna get easier. So you can't sit around and wait for it to feel easier. Like, get up and let's go. Exactly. So yeah, no, that's one thousand. That's one thousand. So I guess that kind of leads us into our next question. You know, the question I ask everybody: uh, What is the hardest thing that you've ever been through in your life? Uh, what did you do to get yourself out of it? Like, what things did you learn? Like, what helped you? What you know? What didn't help you? Like, if you did something that didn't help you, but eventually had to like correct it. So whatever. Well, I say yeah. Uh, <laughs> on the same standpoint, uh, yeah, just losing. You know, like one of the greatest people I've known, cause, uh, yeah, man, that's his dad. Yeah. You know, my whole entire life, you know, just losing him was so hard. But the thing, I said it was one time we had an exercise. What was the happiest and saddest days? Uh, my answer was his funeral. That was the answer for both. Cause when I'm at the funeral, I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like. Yeah, he's touched all these people's lives. Like, yeah. they love him. They Thanks. know him. They know he was just a, just a gift giver, like, and not like a physical, like, present, but like, he gave, you know, emotional gifts. He gave support. He was just, you know, he was present because uh, you have to remember. I, what thing, one thing I remember, you know, things could have been a lot worse. I couldn't have had my dad in my life. My dad could have been a bad dad. My dad could have not done what he should have done in raising me, but he exactly. did, you know, he yeah. was there, he gave us lessons, uh, he would destroy us in all the competitions, but <laughs> it was for a reason, so right. that we had that competitive nature, competitive nature, nature to yeah. keep, you know, going and always have that drive and anything we do, so, you know, that's one thing that, you know, gets me through, is just knowing that he did what he needed to do, what he had to do, so that we'd be ready for the day that, you know, he left this earthly plane. Because to me, I feel like that's the number one goal as a parent is each day, make sure you're doing something to better your child so that when, you know, your time has come, they're ready, they're prepared, you know. Right. And he did that. So 
that's that's how I get through it because I I know that and under understand that. Yeah. How long ago was that? So August will make six years. Yeah. So that was right a year or so before you went to college. No, it was the so, so it, it was, was that, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's he had dropped. He actually took me. He drove. We took the nine hour drive from Charleston, South Carolina to Moorhead and then uh, at summer and then we were in camp and coach that's when coach T called me up and told me and I was like, Yeah, broke down but yeah. 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 And went to camp. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Cause you went home, right? Yeah. yeah. And the, the, my mother and aunt can't get me the next day because yeah. it's like they do, but <laughs> I yeah. couldn't be there by myself. Yeah. Cause it was it was hard. How do you pass? He just uh, has a heart attack. He's on the side of the road. Thankfully, I'll say, I'm about to say one thing is, you know, because he was a truck driver, mm -hmm. you know, he was parked on the side. Uh, so thankfully, you know, no other lives were taken and stuff like that. Okay. You know? But yeah, he was actually in Richmond, Kentucky at the time, too. So it was like, you know, he's right there, so close. Yeah got so far away yeah. when it happens yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy that's yeah. crazy so during football like that next semester how was that for you she had <laughs> cause I mean bro that's, that's your freshman year of college yeah, my like, freshman year you know that's a lot and then having cause literally a lot when it happened you know I had to go home I was gone for like 10 days you know I'll say one thing when we were at the wake, we saw flowers and we were wondering who it was from and it turned out to be from the football program, Coach T and all of them and Rich and all of them. So oh, yeah, that's real. That was yeah, that was something that that's made real. me feel better and then just coming back and being around all y'all and y'all welcoming me back. Uh that felt good. What did suck is cause like because I wasn't at camp, you know, Coach E came to me, he's like, Yeah, we're gonna red shirt you, you know, it's nothing that you did wrong. It's just, you know, we weren't able to see what you could do because you weren't Here. participating yeah. in the camp. And then that first semester, it was like random nights where I would wake up and be crying about, you know, losing him. But thankfully, I did have like other father, other father figures and close friends. I just, you know, they let me call them and talk to them and, you know, just comfort me. And then also had uh my theater classes so you know i take yeah. yeah one of the things for acting you know you take your outside uh situations and just uh, use mm -hmm. it and mm -hmm. utilize it and that's mm -hmm. one thing that also just helped me get through and yeah. i feel like helped me perform even better so for sure no, for sure yeah i can't imagine i'm trying to like in my head like wrap around even yeah. the possibility of losing my mom while I was in college. Mm -hmm. And I it's, think it would have been 10 times worse. Was, but my faith is nowhere as strong right. as it was now. Or my faith is way stronger now yeah, than it was yeah. when I was in college. So I think that back then it might have broken me. Mm -hmm. Like, I might have, because I, even in college, I did some slippery things because my faith was lacking. And I think that would have made it so much worse. So but that's mad kudos to you. That's crazy. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, that's that's crazy, bro. I couldn't imagine. Yeah, but that's wild. Like going in the dog. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, like, bro, like, because yeah, there's people, there's people who can't even handle their freshman year in college. Right. Let alone freshman year of college, freshman year of college football, and then whole new state by myself. <laughs> but then, so yes. how would you say? those things have helped mold you into uh, being a strong man. Because that's what I just popped in my head. I'm like, but you got to be a strong individual to do that. So I'm about to say being out of state by myself, uh, you know, it forced me to, you know, be able to carry on. Because, you know, I didn't, I couldn't just go home on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, most people that are from Kentucky, like, I couldn't just go home and be with my folks, you know, and stuff like that. I had to find my, I had to be resourceful, uh, find my own methods, uh, find my own way to, you know, just really survive while being in a whole new state yeah. for the first time ever. So, like, well, first time ever without my 
you know, parents or right. siblings or anyone. So yeah, you had to make a whole new uh, what's the word uh, like support system, right? Of people that be outside because, like, yeah, you have your support system, like your coaches and stuff. Like even then, like you, it's, you need yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's not the same. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Most is. definitely. Um, I would say, bro, for me, because, you know, I'm in, you're the only person I kind of really know here. Mm-hmm. I would say, for me, I've had to, I had to, when I get lonely, I have to depend on my faith even more. Is that, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you're sitting there alone, and it's crazy. So, like, I, I the craziest feeling to me is the person who I would turn to mm-hmm. when things go wrong. I no longer can turn to. Exactly. And it's crazy because the person that you want to turn to, you can't turn to. But <laughs> what you want to turn to them about is the fact that you can't turn to them. Exactly. So it's just like a very it's weird a paradox that you're in. It. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to turn on my faith. Because yeah. this seems like the most reasonable thing to do right now. So like whenever I feel like that, I'm just like, all right, let me pray. Let me read a verse or something, you know? I'm about to say, I had uh, athletes in action because yeah. I started. Yeah. It was actually, so... How I got started with Athletes in Action. And for those who don't know, that's uh, a Christian athlete group. That's most colleges have them. Uh, high school would be Fellowship Christian Athletes, FCA. I was actually on a visit wearing that sh- my FCA shirt. And Ryan Bennett, mm-hmm. he saw it. Yeah. And he's just like, hey, man. like, And just broke down Athletes in Action with me. And got started with them. And then I think that was another big help. Just being, you know, going to the our meetings every Monday, talking talking to other people that were also faith driven, talking to Rich, Ryan, uh, Becky, all of them. So it's just right. it's a huge help as well. Right. That also, you know, allowed me to remind me, you know, you know, everybody things happen for a reason, you know, God has his timing, his planning, stuff like that. So yeah. For sure. So let's talk about uh your new venture now. We were just talking about it earlier. This, uh, this, uh, so just, well, before we get there, let's talk about this. What is your dreams, like, with acting and everything? Like, your main goals, like, do you want to be more, like, on-screen acting? Do you want to be more, like, writing your own films? Like, what, did you, what do you really want to do? For being honest, it pro- just being in the industry, yeah. you know, because as I'm starting to meet more and more people, you know, I just want to be able to do what they need me to. If they need me to act, I got, I got you. If you need me to write, yeah. produce, like, whatever it is. Even being the cameraman, like, yeah. literally this film that we did, I was the cameraman. I'm like, ooh, that's a great shot. I, <laughs> I did that. Like, it's just stuff like that, you know, just enjoying the little aspects of it. Because I feel like, and this is really with any profession, I feel like when you are focused on one thing, you don't take the time to admire all the extra little things that go behind it. Cause like, even now, like Brandon's behind the camera, but like, this is, that's a big thing. Like right. making sure yes. everything yeah. <laughs> points, uh, goes Almost straight. the biggest thing. Yeah. Like literally, like it's just those little, like those things are overlooked. Like even when you go to a movie, you know, everybody, unless it's like a Marvel movie, everybody just leaves as soon as the credits come on. And I like to sit there, you know, read like, yeah. oh, okay, you did this, yeah. that. Uh, oh, they did this part, this yeah. part, and this part. Yeah, they that. Like, I like to see how many different studios were involved and like all the little things like that. Yeah, for exactly, sure. Exactly, because it's the little things that make the big thing. You know, and that's definitely that thing. That's something uh, people just forget or overlook. And when you're going through anything in life, where it's good, bad, where you're struggling, you always have to fall back on the little things because that's gonna help you get through things that's the basics you know, that's, yeah the basics. go back to the basics exactly so yeah you you know that's like the saying uh, whenever something bad happens you turn to your habits mm-hmm. so you better make sure you have good habits good yeah because that's kind of what happens that's most definitely <laughs> what happens is you turn to your habits so most definitely develop good habits mm-hmm. but no yeah that's crazy bro because you know I, I've said I've, I've always I've, not always but I've been into like I want to watch mo- or make movies yeah. and like do all that do TV shows and like that's my big plan with like FGE in general is yeah. we're making movies eventually so uh, yeah, yeah I got into that connection too. man yes yes, yes. that's <laughs> crazy not, how that what you know is who you know yeah exactly <laughs> it's crazy how that happens yeah, no, my so proud. 
for I can I'll will explain. I'm okay. Yeah, I'll explain. Yeah, yeah. I'll explain. <laughs> <laughs> so the biggest one that I want to do is kind of like, and the more and more I think about it, the more I'm kind of like realizing like it's kind of like Harry Potter, but like I'm so like. <laughs> But now that I've realized that, I've been working hard to like make sure it's, it's not. It's not because I want it to be more of like a. I want to play on this alien thing, out of space thing, but I want it to be more like we have. There's this out of like this galaxy savior, and like he's on Earth and he's like living life, and he kind of has like nightmares and like different things happen to him for like because he kind of like you know, like he knows but he doesn't know like who he's supposed to be and then of course there's like good aliens from outer space who are on this planet like protecting them because they know who he is mm -hmm. and so like, he doesn't know like they're doing all these things to help him and do all this stuff and then um and then there's bad aliens to get that are getting him. Yeah. and then eventually like the bad aliens find him and then like he has to like go learn to fight and do all this stuff and he has like hey, like there's things that they can do that we can't do so then he learns how to do those things and then like his best friends get drug into it because they're they're with him so now they gotta learn how to fight a little bit right. and do this and it's just like a whole series you gotta protect the earth you gotta save the <laughs> galaxy you know what I'm saying it's like a four movie series I like it you feel me something like that that's what I really want and then I'm most definitely 110% buying the Power Rangers. 110%. <laughs> you, man, yes. But I'll tell you, advice, because what helps, every time you think of something, just go ahead and write it down. Yeah. yeah. Whether in your phone or on an actual physical note, because that, it helps a lot. Oh, and yeah. Then, uh, like with the core four, just telling, just telling somebody that also shares that same views, because then you have people that can help you expand on it or add and take away things and it's just and helpful don't yeah don't keep it in yeah. here you gotta yeah. physically put it out because then i'll help it manifest as well thanks thanks so your new project what is it what are you, what are you talking about let's talk about so <laughs> i'll tell you i'll tell you a little bit can't say too much but uh so like i said sell your soul uh, that's the film that we already came out, the short film we already uh, produced. It's on YouTube, if y'all want the link, it's in TV. Yeah, yeah we'll put it at the bottom. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, people, after people have been watching it, you know, either at the film festival or people we've been sending it to, they keep saying, oh, we want more or keep asking for more. And we're like, you know what, we, we got y'all, we <laughs> we'll do more. So, yeah. for this next one, uh, making it into like a prequel basically you know i like the idea of you know seeing how it all started or seeing like somebody else that struggled through uh through the same scenario that you know our main character in the first one struggles through and just going from there because this one i'll say i like to pull from different things this one i'll tell you this because it's not spoiling this one I'm sort of pulling ideas from like Goosebumps and Carrie and uh and like uh why can't I think of the third movie I thought of? <laughs> Goosebumps and Carrie are the main two. Yeah, but, yeah. And it's just that idea of, you know, having this, you know, entity that's and having this serious like world problems, you know. For the first one it was the idea, you know, society, you know, people are so involved in their phone. And, you know, they miss out on the life that's going on Actual around, life. you know, yeah, not being in the present. And so that's one thing in elite media, you know, we always either most of our films want, you know, to have some sort of lesson, like something you can draw out of it that wants you to keep having more. And I think that's the big reason uh, Sell Your Soul Part 1 has been getting so much good feedback. So, yeah. Part two, the prequel. No, yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Look, so this one's not going into a movie festival, though. You guys, we'll probably, it probably will eventually. I was say because, like I said, I do want to when I right now I'm writing, and I want to make sure it's like, I want to hit every point. I want to make sure it's like, dang near perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm going to. I told them I'm gonna make sure you know I get it at least written uh, by the end of this month. So. We're hoping we can uh, submit it to some of the Halloween uh, film festivals because, and then that'll be at least two films we have submitted for that because we are we're working on another one as well and 
It's just, yeah. No, no, that's <laughs> fine, bro. That's exciting. That's <laughs> exciting, bro. Yeah. Real deal. No, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, one of the questions that popped in my head, and I'm not sure exactly how to word this, but it's, because you're obviously facing your fears, because you're on, like, this thing, you don't have fears or doubts while you're writing or while you're filming, yes. right? It's so, like, how are you handling that? So, what is, what is the conversation with yourself with that? Uh, so one of the things is don't be afraid to ask for help because, you know, a lot of people, when they're struggling with fears, they like to just struggle on their own, you know? Like I said, I have, like my mom, mm-hmm. literally, she writes, produces, directs, all that. I'm going to go there every time. Like, that's a cheat code. I'll, yeah. I'll use it. Yeah. So, you know, I, like, with, uh, even though I wrote the last script, I still was like, hey, mother, can you look over this? You know, you know, tell me. Because, you know, I was like, I wasn't sure, you know, if it was as good as I, I, I wasn't sure if I was being biased because I wrote it. Right. You know, she read it and she's like, yes, this is this is great. Like, blah, blah, blah. She gave like a few tips just uh, formatting wise. But, you know, just not being afraid to reach out to other people and get advice, you know, being able to take critique and all that criticism, all that, you know. And then as far as like the fear when it comes to filming and stuff, you know, just take chances, you know, not everything will turn out perfect, but take chances. Uh, and the same thing we learned in football, go at it a hundred percent, whether you're wrong or right, at least you're giving it your all. So you know, just stuff like that. Thanks. Well, that's crazy. Cause the whole thing, I was just listening to someone the other day about people being like, uh, he was saying like people are afraid to face their fears because they want it to be perfect or uh, they, they, they're worried about sucking so bad at it that no one's gonna watch it and it's just kind of one of those things like you just gotta do it yeah just gotta do it and yeah. keep doing it exactly because yeah. as long as you as long as you felt you did your best it doesn't matter yeah. what anybody else thinks like like if our film had turned out bad like hey I I stayed up to 1 a.m. writing this script. Like, I felt like we did great, you know. You know, I, I'm, I'm happy with it. So just being proud of yourself, you know, whether the turnout is good or bad, as long as you feel you put in your best effort, you know, that's yeah. okay. You're not going to be perfect every time because, you know, no let me know. Yeah, nobody's perfect. So yeah. as long as you, because that's another thing I grew up, being taught by both my dads, you know, effort, that's something you can't be taught. No. Uh, and that's in everything, not just sports, you yeah. know, with what we both do. Yeah. Like, and the littlest, and then even in the littlest things, because mm-hmm. one of the craziest things that has stuck with me, and the older I get, I'm kind of started realizing it, the, how you do one thing is how you do everything. <laughs> Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so crazy to think. So like, if you're if you see someone who's like moving slow and doing this, and you know what I'm saying, it's kind of like, well, if he's doing that at the gym, he's probably doing that everywhere else and everything else he does. And it's just that's something that is, I'm really starting to realize. But it's also something that I've learned that you can catch if you can get conscious enough to catch yourself. It's a very easy fix. It, Literally, it's like, literally like we talk about just flipping a switch. Yeah, very easy fix. It's, oh, I'm moving slow. Let me pick up my pace a little bit. But you have to be conscious enough to realize that you're moving slow. And you have to be real with yourself. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, let me switch this up. Let me do better. Like, stuff like that. Well, I think that's where a lot of people, especially our generation, struggles. Yeah. It's just yeah, because it's... having to look at yourself and mm-hmm. be honest with yourself is very hard. It's not a, I mean, you, we kind of, especially playing college ball, you kind of get forced into that. Yeah. Because they're, cause they're doing it to you. So if you don't do it, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you don't do it to yourself. So like, hey, we kind of got cheated or kind of got like, taught to do that so like people who didn't play college sports they didn't really understand like get taught that concept but like learning that you can put yourself in a completely different spot than where you're at today in just two weeks like in just two weeks your whole life could change dramatically just by becoming more conscious of the lowest things that you're doing and just a little more effort here, a little more effort here. Yeah, I'm a little tired, but I'm going to do a little bit more. Right. Right? Because then 
each time you're gonna do a little bit more, do a little bit more, do a little bit more, <laughs> little bit more. and it grows, bro. It grows, man. But yeah, bro, I'm so happy, I'm excited for you about this journey. Bro. This is, I'm excited to see where it goes, cause it's like you have so many good things going for you, and right. you're and you're doing the right things. And I think that um, as you get bigger, you're gonna be one of those people that kind of fights. Whether you choose to or not, just based on what you believe in, mm-hmm. you'll naturally kind of fight against the system, right? Man, you know what I'm saying? You're going to naturally kind of fight against the system, kind of DIY. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to, like, your movie, Sell My Soul and, and do all these things. Like, I'm going to kind of do it myself exactly. and push it. And so that's big time, bro. We need more. more. Our generation in general needs more of that, but in the world, we need more of that. More people that are just kind of like, but I don't have to. I'm rad. I'll take the long way mm-hmm. and do it. I don't want the easy way out and do it. I don't understand that thought process because it's easy now, but like it's gonna be. It's not worth it. Yeah. Later. Yeah. It's, down the road. Yeah. Gotta have that vision to be able to see them down the road. Got that vision, the patience, yeah. especially because now what I love to be, you know. A block on blockbuster movies playing this character playing that character or a regular in the series absolutely but I know that you know my time will come like yeah. one of the things we learn like in acting is you know you have to trust your careers advancing it's on perfect time on a perfect way and then so you can't be always looking at somebody as like dang I wish that was me or I could have done that better or why didn't they pick me stuff like that no and then another thing, like what if we're doing is, if you're not booking, create your own things and book yourself. Like, yeah. you know, you have multiple options and opportunities. You don't have to wait for somebody to pick you. Pick you, pick you. So, yeah. like I yeah, yeah, choose like, you every time. Exactly, every time for sure. So, no, for sure. That, but that, that comes with confidence, though. Mm. You know, you can't just kind of wake up. I mean, you can. <laughs> But it doesn't mean you truly believe it, and that's what's truly going to happen. But, like, it comes with confidence, and confidence is developed by being consistent Mm -hmm. and truly, like, doing it again and again and again. Repetition. You know, proving Mm -hmm. yourself right again and again and again, because then you just get more confident. Mm -hmm. But then you worry about, like, that confidence turning to an ego or pride, you know? Yeah, I see, yeah. And that's that's, that's kind of a double-edged sword there, but... At the same time, I try to, because, so like, people say, like, so, like, I actually, bro, this is actually kind of crazy. So, I was having a conversation with my sister, and we were, you know, she, I had a, situ, a relationship situation, <laughs> and, you know, she, the girl, when we, her and I kind of broke up, she goes, you're one of the most arrogant people I've ever met, like, you, you're this, you're this, you're this, and, and one of the things like I said earlier, in every situation, friendship, relationship, whatever, I'll always sit back and look at how can I have been better? Where was I wrong? What can I do next time to make sure this won't happen? Whatever. So one of the things that I started really looking into was when she called me arrogant. Mm-hmm. And I was really trying to figure out, like, do I really come off arrogant? So I looked up the actual definition of arrogant and the actual definition of confidence. Because they're two different things. Right. And the difference is arrogance is more of a self you have a you have a delusional self importance i don't have that i may come off like i have that i don't have that mm-hmm. confidence is understanding that yeah i am that but it doesn't come from me but you know what i'm saying and it can and, and anyone can do what i do right Right? And that's the difference between confidence and arrogance. Arrogance is me saying, yeah, I'm Jacob. <laughs> None of you can even yeah, come close to me. what I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm not that. Right. And But that's where, but I also think that's why people don't like me. Because I'm not afraid to be like, hey, bro, like, like come on, you can be better. Yeah. yeah. Be better. Say. Like, be better. Like, because I'm not special. I'm just choosing to be better. And that's why I'm, I'm like, bro, like, you can choose to be better too. No matter what you go through, no matter what you've been through, your skin color, your whatever. You can be better. Right. You can be better. Like, it's no, there's no, for me, I don't understand how that comes off arrogant. Yeah. And that, right there, that's, so, another thing involving that is just about who you surround yourself with, you know, because you have to surround yourself with either people that'll, 
you know, force you to be better. Like y'all keep trying to one up each other because there's nothing wrong with friendly competition. Yeah. Or having somebody that can either see your arrogance and you know help you realize and better you, or uh, somebody that's like there to support you. So you know, yeah, I like that. You know that definition for the difference between arrogance and confidence because that's some people just they don't see that often they don't realize that no i mean you can say the arrogance but like i'm not saying like you said i'm not saying i'm the only one that can do this yeah. you know? i'm just saying like yeah i'm doing this because no i'm a, i've chose i've chosen to do it yeah I, i've put in the work i've yeah. stayed up late i've, I've done all the extra things mm-hmm. And and while you were watching Netflix, I was studying, I was learning, I was, you know, and I think that part of the reason why it comes off as arrogant is because people's confidence in themselves is so low. Or they're not doing what they need to. Yeah, so, so they just project it as arrogance mm-hmm. onto you. And no, yes, that's, I, <laughs> I think it's a lot of that. Now that we just said that out loud, I think it's a lot of that. I think it's a lot of that. People lack their own confidence, right. so they try to knock yours. Yeah, for sure. I think people, it's a lot of that. Because there are some people that don't like to see others win, especially win over them, so. Oh, bro, they hate that. <laughs> they hate that. But I, I've never understood that, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I, you cheering for people is probably the most exciting thing that I do. Like, I love being a cheerleader for my people. Like, I love it. Like, I love it. Like, Vinny, like, going over to these, yeah. and then him, like, he, he hit me on some, bro, I'm, I'm doing this WWE thing. <laughs> bro, yes, like, let's go, that's fire. I, like, I even, I repost other people's podcasts, like, people who are doing almost the same thing I'm doing. Like, there's a dude from my city who literally, like, literally, like, a few yes. of them, I asked him to be on my podcast, acted like they were too good, didn't want any part of it, never heard of a podcast. <laughs> Months later, a month later, three of them dropped podcasts and said that they were about to drop them. And I'm like, I was just like, at first, like, at first, like, tenth of a second pissed. But then after a while, I was just like, bro, we're just going to show love. I'm just going to show love. Like, I'm just going to show support. That's all I'm going to do. Like, I'm gonna, I'm, like, it's whatever. Like, I don't understand why. When you hate, you put that energy out. Mm-hmm. Now, I get, I get why you work hard you work hard and someone gets the job over you someone gets the scholarship over you why it hurts yeah i'm gonna say it's definitely gonna we're not gonna pretend like oh uh, like dang yeah he got that let me just not be mad like yeah you're gonna get a little mad it's just care. yeah exactly it shows that you're actually passionate about that and there's nothing wrong with that it's just the difference is you have to be able to like you said still show that support still hype them up like be happy for them like yeah. You know, because like we keep saying, nobody's perfect. So, yeah, it's going to suck. But as long as you're being patient, being humble, all that, and still showing that support, that's what's going to be reciprocated back to you because that's what you're putting out. Right. And it's going to right. it's gonna have to come back somewhere. So, right. you know. you're, when it's your time, it will come back yeah. double or triple. Exactly. Because you've been putting it out so much. Exactly. For sure. No, that's 1,000. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 1,000. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. People miss that. Yeah. People miss that. There's a lot of hate in the world. As soon as you, for me, do you see someone dressed better than them or whatever, you stick your nose up to them and stuff. I never understood it, but I gotta show love. Yeah. I gotta show love. People that show to not show love, but one love back is, mm-hmm. is delusional. <laughs> it's the only way I can put that. You know, it's like a, it's like you wouldn't show loyalty to someone who's not that hasn't shown loyalty to you. So why would you think that you could show hate to somebody and get love back? Yeah. Like from the world. Like that is not how it works. At all. Yes. Yeah. It's the laws, literally laws of science, you know, what you put out, what you get back. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction, all that stuff. It yeah. all goes hand in hand. For sure. The forces of nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Nah, yeah. <laughs> But this conversation has actually been pretty well. I'm about to say, I love it. Yeah. Smooth. The, the, once again, bro, the craziest thing is we didn't have to spend like t- the first 25 minutes just catching up because we were talking. No, I'm about to say, we <laughs> we've been seeing each other. Down the street. Yeah. We've been enjoying ourselves. I will say, TJ is fake when it comes to uh, inviting me to hoop. <laughs> He'll, uh, he'll hit me, but. You know my hooping schedule, man. You just come through. 
I don't know the sleeping <laughs> schedule. Sometimes it hoops on Mondays. I, I called him Sunday when I was leaving church. And he, was, he was like, oh, I'm on my way to hoop right now. I was like, oh, man. That's because they, they hit me up, you know, because, you know, I, they, they hit me up. They want, they want me out there. You know, they, I'm a competitor. Yeah. So. But I'm 60 pounds less. I'm trying to, I'm, feeling, I'm trying to see what my hooping is like. Listen, I'm trying to get up there. I feel like I can dunk now. Uh, it might be by the time we done. It might be too late. The time but, it is now. But oh yeah. <laughs> but Wednesday, yes sir. That's tomorrow. Can, yes sir. That is tomorrow. Let's go hoop tomorrow. I don't think we have anything much anything planned tomorrow. I always try <laughs> to record with. Uh, <laughs> Name, let me know. Just let me know. Yeah. Let me no, know. depend. Oh no, I have a production meeting. So now I went. Damn, I won't hoop again this week. I'm done this week. <laughs> but it's for good reasons. We good. I love. Yeah. You know, we gotta have a meeting, let us, so we can figure out what we these. Cause it's a lot of films we want to get out this this year. So. Oh, that's fine. So I'm that's gonna, good. It's for, it's for good reasons. Yeah. No, I I most definitely want to start being part. Like I don't have to, I just want to sit. Like I don't want to, I don't have to talk. I don't have to. I just want to sit. And I just want to listen and I just want to learn and I just Look, want to watch. We are literally so. What we talked about is us four. Obviously, are going to be the main ones. We're going to be the actual elite media, but you know we want to help others. If somebody comes to us saying, "Hey, I have a script. Can y'all help me produce it?" Or, "Hey, you know, I want to act in something." You know, we'll bring y'all along. So, and the same, we'll reach out to other people. Hey, I want to get my editing, you know, resume, add this to my resume, stuff like that. You know, that's that's one thing we are permanent on. You know, we want, we still want to help others. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're still there, really. Active like, service. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> helping like, others. Yeah. Because exactly. I mean, helping others is how you get ahead. Exactly. Because then, you know, we're not looking for it, but in the future, you know, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, Malik Media, I can hit them up. You know, they, I've worked with them, you know, they're great, blah, blah, blah. they helped me with this, so, and stuff like that. Come back to them. Yeah, exactly. For sure, for sure. Because you never know who, small now that you help, go might big. go big. And then, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like that. Help everybody. Exactly. Act to serve, help everybody. For sure. But that comes, but in order to do that, you have to be able to not put yourself first. No. Yeah. And that's that's hard for a lot of people to do. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's a skill, to not put yourself first. Because, once again, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting yourself first in the littlest ways, then, like it's going to be hard to do it in the bigger ways. Because you're going to be your own roadblock. Yeah. And it's like... Yeah. It's hard to move you <laughs> once you once once you cement yourself in into place. Yeah, yeah it's hard. Yeah, because you can convince you. So I I say I say you're the best salesman to yourself. Mm -hmm. Either way, so like you can convince yourself of anything, anything. anything. <laughs> good, bad, negative, ugly, whatever. You can convince yourself of anything and justify it in your head. Exactly. Either way. No so like, else has to understand it. No, as long as you do. As long as you do, and you think that's okay. Yeah, no, exactly. You have to. People have to get out of their own ways. Mm -hmm. And every and every field, no matter what you're doing, you have to get out of your own way. Whether that's coming into college and playing college ball, and you don't play your freshman year, mm -hmm. and you're sitting back pouting every day, and now you're going to practice mad. You don't want to be here. And this, it's like what? Well, go get better. Exactly, like mate. What I did is because Higgy, Higgy was one of the best receivers to be in our in our uh, conference. What I did is challenge myself. I'm like, bet, I'm gonna try to break up passes, lock them up, stuff like that. You know, I try to so yeah. as a, another chance to be competitive. You know, you know, even though, cause like freshman year, you know, I was on the scout team, but I was like, well, I get to go against the starters, and like I just said, he one of the best receivers. So if I can guard him, you know, a few times out of yeah. a lot of plays, then other receivers are. Walking apart, walking apart. Like Especially when I come back here and play next year. Yep. <laughs> yeah. in a lot better spot than I was. For sure. Yes, For sure. But that once again comes with having the vision to be able to look down the road. Yeah. Be able to see. Um, I uh, have you ever read the book Only the Paranoid Survive? No. You should read that book. No. It's, it's a great it. book, but it'll change your thought process on a lot of things. But that's one of the things that he talked about, um, was saying that being able to not only live in the, in your moment, but being able to understand that your moment 
will affect your future. Right. So being able to do, being able to see what you want your future to look like, right. and being able to do things in this moment to work towards that future. But that causes, but you have to be willing to sacrifice some things in the moment. Because once again, right? Because you're sitting there and you have two options. One of them is easier than the other, and the easier <laughs> one is to sit here. I'm, I'm not playing. Why do I care? I'm just right. be out here. But that doesn't help you in your future, no. right? The sacrifice the now for the future is I'm coming out here mm-hmm. and I'm going to be the best that I can be and I'm going to get better either way. And that's like on anything you do. Mm-hmm. Like on, on a Monday morning when you don't want to go to work and you're already thinking for Friday, like you, like, that doesn't even make sense. Because that right there, that's a physical uh Future things gonna show up in your paycheck like damn. Yeah. I should have gone on Monday. So. Yeah, I should have showed up on Monday. <laughs> sold, sold them three cars instead of sat there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And that's yeah, that's exactly what it is. You have to be willing to sacrifice the moment for now. You're tired in the moment, mm-hmm. so you're not gonna go do that project. But you think you're not gonna be tired tomorrow? Exactly. So you're or just gonna put it off. You actually need it. Yeah, when it has to get done. You gonna wait to the last minute? Either way, you're gonna be tired. Right. So just do some of it now. Mm-hmm. Just try to knock out what you can now. And then you don't know. That's a, yeah, it's crazy saying that because you also don't know what's going to happen yeah. in the future. Like, there's no time like the present. No yep. time better than now because you know, you never know tomorrow for as, as far as an like, analogy. So sort of like what you were saying with the project was to say your laptop won't break tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> now you're definitely screwed. Cause... Now you're screwed for sure. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like you only procrastinate because you you think that tomorrow's guaranteed. Mm -hmm. If you knew tomorrow wasn't guaranteed, you wouldn't procrastinate. (laughs) You know? You would get it done right now, but you don't know. But you you should have that mindset anyways, because once again, only the paranoid survive. So you should have that mindset anyways, because you don't know. Because tomorrow is not promised, and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. (laughs) So you might as well do it anyways. I like that. That title is definitely... Oh, so oh, right. Sense. So listen, I'll tell you one of the craziest things that I learned from the book. My favorite chapter, and I, and so I use this theory, this mindset, whenever I was found out about my son mm-hmm. or Quentin was being born. Mm-hmm. So like, he, he didn't know. Like, we didn't know one hundred percent if Quentin was gonna be mine or not. Like, there wasn't one hundred percent. We weren't gonna know until she, he was born. So it was. I could, so one of the theories, that, the way he explained it in the book was if you're preparing, so like we're in a nuclear war, mm-hmm. right? And there's two sides of this. You either believe it's going to happen or you don't believe it's going to happen. And I even, so even now I um, used it to, uh, when the recession started at the end, towards the end of 2022, yeah. right? It was, you can believe we're in a recession or you can't believe. But let's, but let's look at these two options. So let's say war, nuclear war, recession happens, right? Let's say it happens. And you were in the camp that didn't believe it was going to happen. So it happens. It happens. You're SOL. Yeah. You didn't prepare. You're not, you weren't prepared in the slightest. Let's say you were in the group who, who knew it was going to happen, who thought it was going to happen, who prepared for it. You're ready to go. Mm-hmm. You're set. You got, things in, you got things in order. You, got, you know what I'm saying? When it happens, you're good to go. All right, but let's say it doesn't happen. And you were part of the group that was like, nah, the nuclear war is not going to happen. Nah, the recession is not going to happen. Nah, the kids are not mine. I don't need to prepare for that. Bet you're in the same boat you would have been before. Exactly. But let's say you're in that same boat and it happens. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, you're SOL. Mm-hmm. Or, or, no, I said that wrong. So let's say you're in, that, in the other boat where you prepared for it to happen and it doesn't happen. You're in a better scenario than you would have been either way. Because now, like, if the nuclear war doesn't happen, I probably have money saved up. I probably have some food storages. I probably learn new skills, new things that are going to help me later. Right? If, if, the, if the recession doesn't happen, I probably saved money. I probably did these things, moved money, started this, started this. Found the ways to better your future, be more efficient about things. You know what I'm saying? So it helped me in the future. The kid's not mine. Oh, bet. I most definitely saved money. I most definitely got prepared. I know what to do when I do have the kid. You know what I'm saying? All those things, right? And that was one of the craziest takeaways I had. Yeah, that's, that's definitely... It's definitely a great takeaway. <laughs> you know, because it, cause it really makes you like, I guess the same would be prepare for the worst, pray mm-hmm. for the best. Right. You know, kind of thing. So, what I say, what I like to say is, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. Mm. So, like, 
when I travel, <laughs> and I'm bad at this, I overpack. Overpack. Uh -huh. I overpack. Like, this weekend, I have to go to South Carolina for a wedding. I'll probably have at least six outfits, but I'm only going to be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But you never know. Because I'm being in the car all the Fridays. So all the Friday, yeah. Outfit. Oh, yeah. And then Saturday of the wedding, one, one, one or two outfits. Fit, yeah. <laughs> you, but you never know because you hate exactly. to spill something. You hate exactly. to, yeah, you never know. Or some new plan. Yeah. Spontaneous comes up. I'm yes. ready. I'm ready, you know, ready to go. Stuff. Yes. No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Only the paranoid survive. <laughs> Only the paranoid survive. We're going to have to put, that's going to be the title of this. Yeah. Only the paranoid survive. And that's another thing. People, they hear, the, they hear the word paranoid and things negative. It's not a negative thing at all. <laughs> Being paranoid does not mean you're crazy or no. it's bad. Like, it's okay you're to be aware. paranoid. Yeah, yeah. you're aware. You're on the present. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of everything that can potentially happen exactly. in this scenario. But it's the same reason why I, I will say, so on that note, why I kind of don't like going out because mm -hmm. at the point I am slightly paranoid mm -hmm. and I know when people start drinking then they it gets ugly yeah. and I know especially nowadays people like cause, so I'm a pro 2A person like people should have guns they should, but people don't know how to yeah. handle that how to handle it. <laughs> mentally we're not tough enough or in a place cause just because me and you are boxing doesn't mean that one of us has to pull a gun out you know what I'm saying like that's not to happen especially, especially with this generation they, you know they don't like to lose no so they too much pride yeah. yes too much pride and ego for people to be carrying on guns mm -hmm. and that's why I just but but also at the same time I'm pro gun mm -hmm. so I'm that's why I'm, I just I'm it's just like, gonna stick it in the like it around. Yeah, 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 I'm just gonna kick it around the crib. Like I'll go out during the day when people are more calm. From yeah, we might drink a little bit, but it's during the day. So yeah. people are not gonna get freaking rowdy. Yeah. But like one AM, people are drunk and they're ready to get rowdy. And you look at one dude's girl wrong or he thinks you did, and now you're getting shot at for some you know what I'm saying? I just I just rather not. I just rather not. I'd rather kick it in the crib. Yeah. Yeah, and I think there's also part of the reason why I'll probably be single for a long time. Because <laughs> girls still want to go out and do that kind of stuff. I'm just kind of like, but it's not worth it. Like, it's not worth it. Like, I was, like, I'll, I'll, I won't say who told me this story, but he told me a story. He was going out, and he was at the, he was at the club or whatever. And he's, and he didn't, he went with a group, like, a group of people. And, but he ran into people that he knew. And while he was there, right, they kind of, you know what I'm saying, there's some dudes come in and, you know, get a little rowdy or whatever. And some of the guys that he was with looked at him and was like, you bring your pole with you? Where your pole at? And it's just kind of like, but if you got to ask me that question, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Like, if I had, like, if that is a standard for me to be here, why would I want to be there? Why would I want to put myself in that scenario? Like, yes, I agree. Like, y'all probably should bring it with me regardless, <laughs> but like, at the same time, like, why would I want to be in a scenario where I have to? Exactly. Where it's smart to. Like, it doesn't, like, come on, bro. Be better. <laughs> be better. Yes, bro. Yeah, no. Nah. Only kind of survive, though. It only had, like, come on, now. Nah. It's facts. I'm, I'm willing to assume back in, like, the days of, like, people living in trees and stuff. Only the paranoid, the people who were afraid of snakes and all that stuff were the ones who survived. Yeah. A lot of people were willing to poke the bear and all that, and they didn't survive. They, know. <laughs> they thought it was all right. Yeah, they didn't survive. <laughs> they didn't survive. How long have we been going? An hour? Well, you got anything else you want to get off your chest? Anything else? No, man. That's a good place. <laughs> yeah, no, facts. This is a, I, but I, one, I don't know about you, but I kind of forgot we were on a podcast. <laughs> I didn't even think we were going, that's an hour for real, that's. <laughs> no, that's what happens, but me and Coach Rhodes were here for like two and a half. That's crazy. Yeah, we were just on here talking. Not yeah, that's why I love doing this, bro. Yeah, like, right. like, just imagine like all the conversations like I'm going to get to have, like as we get bigger, Not like this. with some people. Right. Like, like whenever Cam Newton is sitting over there, it's all bad. I have all kinds of questions to ask him, like all kinds. Oh, and we're gonna get to the bottom of this Auburn Mississippi State thing. <laughs> we almost got suspended, and we can get to the bottom of it. like because at this point it's over. Hey. So like, I just want to like you from because like to think that his dad like the fact that his dad was like yeah I took the money yeah and to think that Cam didn't know like come on I guess you can't prove it but like come on like, let's just talk yeah. about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, that's exactly to me. You know? But yeah, I have a lot of people that I'm ready to sit on the other side and get to ask some questions about. Athletic directors, 
Um, just all kinds of people. I just want to ask questions too. I figure stuff out about. But yeah. But I appreciate you coming. Of course, doing this any, anytime. Yes, we'll have to do this again. But we'll have to do. Um, we we'll have to do a two man. Like get someone else over there. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll be. Yeah. I don't know who though. Maybe Kalen. Kaylin. Well, well, I want to get Kaylin to come to Atlanta. <laughs> hey, that's hey, Kaylin, yeah. Yeah, that's make your way back up home. Yeah. Yeah, what y'all know, Kaylin from Atlanta. He don't like to admit it, though. Is he? He really from Columbus, ain't there? <laughs> <laughs> but he... Uh, <laughs> he I do, from everywhere. I do. I forget that he does go up to Columbus. Yeah. I forgot about that. He, he done lived in a few places. No, he claims Florida, bro. Yeah. He claims yeah, Florida. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Not my <bro>, boy. <laughs> He loves it. But, alright, bro. I appreciate right, you it's coming, it's bro. Like, yeah, you go, man. <laughs> you say all y'all watching. Enjoy. Make sure you follow TJ. Where can they follow you at? Uh, you follow me on IG at ITSTJ underscore Johnson30. And, yeah. We're going to put the link to the <laughs> short film on there. Make sure you catch all of his other short films. But, once again, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. In the mirror, hey. I see a great man. Look, look in the mirror. Oh, I see a great man. Just look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. Hey. I see a great man. I see a great man. I see a great.